the word tsunami, you probably don't think about the Great Lakes, but experts say they do happen right here in the Midwest and they happen more frequently than you imagine. There's a big meeting underway in Ann Arbor to talk about the phenomenon and more importantly, the importance of a tsunami warning system. Our Paula Tupman joins us now from a long Lake Erie. I have to admit, I was not aware of tsunamis in this area, Paula. I wasn't either, but we have as many as a hundred or sometimes more than a hundred a year in the Great Lakes. And these are the people it affects, people who use the Great Lakes as their playground. So think about this, drowning victims caught up in a sudden swell or rip current, boats damaged at a marina because of a sudden undetected shift in water depth. Scientists are meeting at this moment to create parameters of this phenomenon. They know it exists, but they don't fully understand it themselves. The Great Lakes state great in part because we are kissed by four of five Great Lakes. We have far more freshwater coastline than any other state. The ways of our big water matter because in terms of commerce, recreation and safety, we are nearly surrounded. But now we kind of need to start relying a little bit more and more on remote sensing. And that's why it's important to note the gathering of scientists from all over the world right now. Organized by the Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research on the campus of U of M, scientists from all over the globe have been brought together to discuss a phenomenon called meteo tsunamis. Oceanic tsunamis are caused by earthquakes. Meteo tsunamis are caused by atmosphere and are prevalent in our Great Lakes. So we're talking about a storm front moving across the lake, creating a wave in the water under that storm front. This is what big waves look like off of Lake Michigan. Their power is undeniable. But in a meteo tsunami, the power can seemingly sneak up, hit and run. This animation recreates two Great Lake meteo tsunamis in Chicago in 1954. It took seven lives. And by recreating it and showing how the atmosphere transfers its energy and disperses it along the shoreline. The thunderstorm moving across the lake and moves past. And what it does, it gets the lake to respond. So that wind, that fast wind and big change in pressure that's associated with a thunderstorm creates a wave on the water. By understanding that nine foot waves in the red, the trough of that wave in blue, which could be as much as nine feet, by understanding that 18 foot differential, scientists can better understand its power and how to create a warning system. It's suspected that we experience more than 100 meteo tsunami events every year. And the thing about a Great Lake tsunami is it doesn't have to sweep over the land to kill, injure, or destroy. So what we're wondering is if the meteo tsunamis are an added factor of people drowning from rip currents, waves, and things like that. So maybe not the cause, but are they adding into it by that slow change in water level? So other countries are way ahead of us on this. They already have warning systems. They have a better understanding of the phenomenon. Many of those experts are in town right now, really trying to get local experts to understand this. And as you can see, it is really important for scientists to understand it so they can educate us, Karen. Very, very interesting. All right, thank you, Paula, along Lake Erie, live this afternoon for us.